Hello and welcome to a pro patch breakdown here at LOL Class. Let's take a look at this week's changes. So, this is a new item called Call. Uh, it can be a starting item. I think it'll depend on, you know, if you're 2v1, if you think you can get away with not having the extra life on Doran's Blade. Uh, I think you might not be able to get a pot either, so it's, it's gonna be pretty weird. I don't know if it's gonna be bought every game, but I do like the item in comparison to Everice Blade since the way Everice Blade worked, it, it gave you gold, yeah. Give you some gold generation, but the main point was having the crit on it, and the crit was super annoying to play against and play with. You just can't predict when, you, when it's actually going to go off. Whereas this, it, it gives life on hit, small AD, and then you just get the passive gold. So it's it's a nice item. There's there's no there's no real downside here. The only downside is if you try and start it first and maybe get punished in it, punished for it in lane phase. So I like the item. So the new essence saver is pretty unique, honestly. It doesn't give life to anymore. It gives 65 AD, 20% crit, 10% CDR, and you get up to 20% more CDR equal to your crit chance uh, from other items that uh, aren't this one. So, oh, and it also gives uh, crits reduce or uh, restore 3% of your max mana. So that's pretty interesting overall. Uh, really just gives a nice way for AD carries to actually get CDR because the only real way to get it before was uh, Yomu's. I hated CDR boots on AD carries, it was never good, and Essence Seaver was never really a good item. You could try and buy it, and it was like, okay, in some scenarios, a Bloodthirster is always better. But Essence Seaver actually gives the focus towards this kind of a CDR needing AD carries, probably likely going to be Grave Solution, the most obvious two that I can think of. So I, I like the item, uh, I don't know if it'll be straight up just better than the other ones like for a first item definitely be cool to build though for the uh, first few weeks it'll probably take a bit to realize if it's actually going to be like a core part of the build so two new items here giant slayer and lord dominix regard they're pretty interesting you basically just get increasing percentage physical damage against champions that have higher health than you which doesn't come into play too often uh because if you're fighting a mid laner it's not going to be that much of a difference, so you'll get a really small percentage damage increase, which, sure, it's better than nothing, but almost useless to a point. Uh, but then you get, what do you get, 10 AD on the item? I don't know, this item looks really weak. It's not going to be amazing. You, the only times it'll really be effective is tank supports, uh, the jungler, and if the top laner is going tank, which happens pretty often, but you're not always hitting this guy's uh, AD carry. You'll be hitting for a majority of the game. Uh, support. You're hitting a decent amount. Uh, I, I guess this item really comes into play like third though, where team fights are really starting to happen. You can actually probably get through the front line a bit easier with just a little damage increase since uh, Giant Slayer builds into Lord Dominic's Guard, which also gives you penetration, 40% bonus armor, which is kind of kind of weird. They changed that last whisper works. Instead of full on 30% armor pen, it's 40% bonus armor, which means it's worse against people without armor. So there's two new items here, Executioner's Calling and Mortal Reminder. I guess Executioner's Calling is, you know, making a comeback, come back to the game. Bit different stats, has 15 AD and inflicts grievous wounds on people that are 40% and lower. Yeah, so it's basically just the AD carries Morello passive, which is nice because for some reason mid laners haven't AD carries didn't anymore and there's no way for us to stop healing. So when you're against Soraka, it's a pretty good item, uh, and AD carries, I guess. Just stop the lifesteal of the enemy. Pretty nice. Uh, then that turns into Mortal Reminder, which does the exact same thing, except gives the Last Whisper uh, passive, which is 40% bonus armor pen, which is a bit better against people who don't have armor, since it's not a bad passive to have. It might be more of a specific buy, though. Like, if, like, say, if you wanted a Grievous Wounds effect on someone. So I don't know if you just generically buy this item anymore. Because bonus armor pin is really only good against people who actually build armor. Because <laughs> it does literally nothing against, uh, like, a Vayne who doesn't have any armor items like she shouldn't have. Or a mid laner who might only have Zonias. So I don't know, it, it'll be pretty specific. Uh, it seems like it carries well will have more focused builds and not just have to build generically every game. Like, instead of going Infinity Edge, Static Shiv, Last of Spear every game for an AD carry, you might actually have to think about what you're going to be building. Like, do I want Creepiest Wounds? Do I want Giant Slayer passive on the enemy? 
Do I want this bonus pen? Do I really need it? So there's going to be a ton more decision making in your item building. So the there's two new items here. Uh, they're pretty interesting. It's Kirchi's Shard and Rapid Fire Cannon. Uh, they basically use this shard to be a replacement for Avarice Blade, as I call it. And I honestly hated Avarice Blade. I'm glad they removed it. And they put it in with in an item that gives attack speed and a smaller version of a uh, static ship, I guess, that we know. Because it gives 30 bonus damage on hit when you get a charge. So, kind of weird, small little damage increase and you get it. Better than nothing, I guess. But, uh, pretty easy build path. Only costs 750. Costs a dagger, which apparently only costs 300 gold, which is nice. But then, the Rapid Fire Cannon, pretty cool item, honestly. 30% attack speed, 30% crit. 8% move speed, high move speed, high crit. Uh, no real downside of this item besides attack speed being low. Um, but the bonus is that you get the uh, unique active fire cannon is what it's called. You get 35% bonus range up to a maximum of 150. So I think it'll be, you know, a bit less on super low range that he carries. But then uh, you get also 50 to 200 bonus magic damage based on your level so that's gonna be pretty high you'll get this item probably second it'll do you know like 120 probably up up to 200 based on the uh time you get it but it's gonna be pretty cool uh nice to hit on structures since it works on towers i don't know if it works on uh inhibs but should work on towers extra sieging ability i don't know if it'll be bought in specific scenarios where you're only trying to siege but it also really helped just being able to hit people when you're not able to because that's kind of advantages that super high range hit carries have like caitlin she can always be hitting people she doesn't really have to sit around and wait till they come in with this item though even if you're not caitlin you'll be able to hit people every now and then and still do some damage so I, I like the item i don't know if i'll be buying it over anything else because uh i haven't actually tried it yet so we'll have to see how it actually feels first to know if it's the next broken item or not so the PD changes are really interesting because um, basically they change how you build Static Shiv and the new cannon item. You don't need Avarice Blade anymore, which means that the build path was replaced by that new item. But it also means that you don't get an extra gold boost for one of the items. You can now basically choose between one of the three more easily. So Phantom Dancer gives 40% attack speed, 30% crit, and then it's more of like a... It looks kind of like a 1v1 item. Uh, when you're within, within 500 range of an enemy, you get 12% move speed, and you can move through units, which, I don't know, tons of move speed. It's honestly, like, whatever for the for that. It's okay. And then the last type of unit you, that deals damage to you, or uh, the last type of unit you hit deals 12% less damage to you. So, I don't know. It. <laughs> I, I, I guess if there's an assassin in the fight, this could be a pretty good item to buy against them. You'll be able to run away faster. Uh, if you hit them, they'll just do less damage. Might be enough to save you. Uh, but uh, it, it looks so weird to me that I don't know if it's going to be worth it. Just because the cannon item is going to be doing way more damage and extra range. Pretty nice. Static ship also going to be doing a lot more damage and AoE. And then this item is like you get some move speed a bit more than the others. <laughs> you get 4% more than the cannon. And then the only real selling point is going to be this 12% less damage to you. So I don't know if it's going to be amazing or just still unbought. The new item, Jarn's Fist, built into hysterics, pretty much lets you uh, have a good laning phase. Since it also grants like 5 maximum health and stacks up to 30 times, you can pretty much scale before getting the upgraded items that you want, like hysterics, frozen mallet, or titanic hydra. So before the changes, hysterics, cage, and frozen mallet would have like an awkward build trying to build it, but now with Jarn's Fist, you can scale and have an easier time building it. With the new Triforce changes, I still don't think that many top players are going to use it, but I think the ones that use it right now might be buffed a bit from it. Like Hecarim, uh, with the AP changes out and CDR in, it's really good on Hecarim since he uses CDR a lot, and with the crit chance changes, he could probably go for like a more crit build, like Triforce, Yomus, and have a lot of crit to do a lot of damage with crit. And he doesn't really need attack speed that much, so I think these changes help a lot for Hecarim. And maybe like Fiora too, getting crit build, since Fiora uses CDR, and then the crit chance helps too. With the changes to Vamp Scepter, it gives 5 more 80 and 2% more lifesteal just for the cost of 100 gold. I think that's a really good 
a great buff because it's so much stats for just only 100 gold so i think people are just gonna start building it uh maybe jungle or top more since it just gives too much i think the top players that are gonna rush vamp scepter first is like champions that build into pork so probably like trinomir and jacks that they can build vamp scepter and then uh turn that into a pork player and i think that's gonna help their early lane phase a lot since vamp scepter was always a weak dueling item but now that gained 580 and 2% lifesteal is going to be really strong. For Iceborne Gauntlet, I think this won't be a very useful item for junglers. It lost 30 AP, so you won't do as much damage when you buy it. It costs a little bit less gold, but uh, I don't think it'll be that useful because um, it doesn't give that much armor for the for the money. And then also, uh, the champions that you'd be buying it on are like tanks pretty much only because like anything that used to go like AP or hybrid on it wouldn't buy it anymore. Um, so I guess it really just depends on the size of um, the slow and like how much that, that works with your bonus armor. Cause realistically you're only gonna have about 170 to 230 armor on a tank when you buy this item. So it'll mainly be about how big the slow is and if that slow is enough uh, to warrant like the massive lack of like raw stats that are on the item. The Caulfield's Warhammer is kind of an alternative to Brutalizer. It's a little bit cheaper, but the main problem with it is it has no armor pen on it. Um, so this is just gonna uh, nerf all the champions that just rely on having early armor pen to be effective. Specifically, I think of like Lee Sin, Riven, champions that just uh, like require the armor pen enable it in order to deal with tanks. So I think this is just like another nerf to melee champions, just kind of like a buff to like ranged champions. All of the gold support items have been changed to 350 gold, which just makes it easier to buy other items. They're all cheaper. And they've all been increased in the amount of gold they give. So Ancient Coin has now gives four gold per minion death instead of three gold. And then the upgraded Nomads also gives six gold now. I think it gave five gold before. <laughs> and then Talisman gives six gold now. So Talisman actually was nerfed overall. It costs more and it has a 60 second cooldown, but the earlier items were buff to give more gold but so are the other sport items so like spell thieves now gives eight gold on every auto or spell you do with a the passive instead of six or instead of five actually and then the upgraded versions give more and now frost queen's claim the active was changed into the the two ghosts coming out instead of the <laughs> instead of it shooting just like a right in front of you which is a better active the two ghosts is definitely going to be better since you can use that to explore the jungle make it safe for you and just also catch people, it's just a much better active. So I, I think Frost Queen definitely got the, the, the biggest buff out of the three gold items. It didn't get the biggest of the, um, Spell Thieves didn't get the biggest, but the fact that it upgrades into Frost makes up for that, since I think this is actually quite a big buff, the new active. Now, Relic Shield also gives more gold. It gets plus two gold per 10 seconds, which it didn't have. And the upgraded Face of the Mountain is actually, I'm not sure if it's a buff. It gives 50 less HP, and it gives less healing, like when you're killing minions. But the shield, when it procs, now slows enemies around when it explodes for 40% for two seconds. But the fact that you can't actually activate it twice to explode it early, they have to actually wait four seconds, makes it kind of hard to actually hit the slow. I'm going to say that it's at, at, at best not not a buff even. The fact that they took away some HP and it's too hard to hit the slow. It, it's not bad, but it's not really good either. So, and Talisman, they got more gold, but it got nerfed in other ways. That's about the same as well. So Frost Queen better, the other two about the same is where I'd put it. And also, as I mentioned before, all three of these, all three of these can now upgrade into a different thing rather than the finished Frost Queens or Faith of the Mountain. They can upgrade into a, a eye, which is Sightstone plus this gold item, which you're probably going to be doing if you're getting like the ancient coin thing. Actually, hmm, it's just an option to do sometimes, I guess. You probably won't be doing it that often. As far as I can tell, they don't look that strong. The, the three eyes compared to the upgraded gold items of Frost Queen, Face the Mountain, Talisman. But it's nice to have that option. It, it just makes these gold items better. You're never going to be selling them anymore since you can always upgrade them to more, which you used to sell them sometimes. So the Hunter's Machete has changed its price. And this is mainly so you can start with a Hunter's Machete and um, a potion uh, or like the... Um, the versatile potion and uh, the way you're gonna do this is you're gonna buy your hunter's machete you're gonna buy your potion and then that'll be able to stay in the jungle early and then on your first ending clear you're either gonna upgrade your machete or you're gonna just um, upgrade your hunter's potion depending on how much sustain you have and that'll be the way that you get early 
Hunter's Talisman is going to be what helps you into your jungle item. So um, it's a cheap item, it's 350 gold. And uh, you probably won't even buy it by itself. You'll probably just buy it when you're ready to upgrade. But it increases your mana regen by 150% of the jungle. So that's going to be getting him down. And then also damaging monsters steals 20 health over 5. So um, that's just going to be a way to clear faster as so just more healthy. And uh, you're going to need this to the three jungle items that are the three upgrades, which are Tracker's Knife, um, Skirmisher's Saber, and Chilling Smite. Tracker's Knife is going to be the go-to to all junglers that don't build a sidestone. And the reason for this is because um, the active is that it, that it places a stealth ward on the map um, for 150 seconds. And uh, this will be, this will have two charges and it will be uh, re regenerated every time you go back to the shop. So essentially, if you don't want to build a side zone or if you just want to get vision control early, you'll just be building the tracker snipe and then just going out, placing wards and just trying to farm up as much as possible, utilizing the fact that you get bus experience from killing large monsters. For Runeglaive, you no longer um, get as much AP as before because the sheet doesn't hold out of an Amp Tome anymore. And instead, uh, you just add an extra Amp Tome into the build um, path. And you'll get slightly less AP, but a little bit of increased mana. I think this is overall just a nerf to Runeglaive. It'll just be a less powerful item for it. Um, and yeah, it will just, like, you'll still get the Sheen proc, but it just won't be as powerful because you're lacking some um, AP. And then also, uh, Enchantment Warrior, uh, the, you lost the armor pen, which is actually a big deal for Warrior. You gain more flat attack damage, so I guess this would be good for champions that are trying to assassinate targets that don't have much armor in MR, but um, I still think this is like an overall nerf to the item. Um, it's just uh, 400 more expensive for 15 more AD, but then you also lose like all the armor pen that you bought, so uh, maybe with the more, with the increase in ambient gold, it won't be as bad, but just from looking at it, it looks like um, a nerf to Blade and Warrior. Reduced by 25 gold, made 300. This is something you always got before. It'll just make it easier to get and buy some wards as well at the same time, so that, that's a nice change. You'll probably be getting that slightly earlier in sports now than you used to. And now a big change is there's three boots that cost 800 gold now. So you have a good choice between boots of mobility, boots of swiftness cost 800 gold, and the movement speed was lowered to six or is increased to 65 from 60. So it's definitely a very good choice now. And then the CDR boots cost 800 gold. It only gives 10% CDR from 15, but it, it reduces your summoner spells by 10%, which is probably usually worth more than 5% CDR, or at least pretty close. So all three of these boots are very good choices. And I don't know what's best right now, but I, I'm pretty sure they're all viable choices. Ha having three choices rather than before, it's almost always mobility boots. A very good change, and I'm, I'm very happy about that. They added a refillable potion, which costs 150 gold, which means that supports can now buy this as well as their gold generating item at level one. It holds two charges, recovers 100 HP each time, and regenerates whenever you go back and uh, go back to base. This is going to be bought on any supports who don't need a ton of HP pots, because it only gives 200 HP, which isn't as much as you know buying normal health pots. But the fact that it does upgrade into these two other items, Hunter's Potion and Corrupting Potion, it means that if you can get away with it, you're going to want to. And now Hunter's Potion is just a bunch of health and mana. It's five charges, it's just a really big potion basically corrupting potion is three charges of also health and mana but it also gives you damage on your spells and attack whenever you're um using this corrupting potion whenever you have it active which is going to be a lot it gives 15 to 30 damage over three seconds on every spell and attack which is a, a very decent amount especially for support so this is going to be the more primary one you're going to try to get